Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we are covering examples of how to install hips, valleys, ridges, and other flashing zones on a metal shingle roof. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett, subscribe if you're new here. We release new metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Today we are learning some different examples of how to install hips, valleys, ridges, and other flashing zones on a metal shingle roof. Mark from Isaiah Industries is gonna be walking us through some different examples on their training decks using their rustic aluminum shake as the example for today. If you missed part one, which is more like an intro to metal shingle installation, you can check that out right here. Now, let's go over to Mark and talk about valleys. This is the rustic valley. We also use it um, for several, several other of our shake profiles. Uh, it has two standing ribs that are about three quarters of an inch high. Of course, when it uh, comes from the factory, it's just going to have a squared off end to the piece. So I'm going to put it in place, I'm going to center it on the valley, and then from the underside, or from the top with a straight edge, I'm going to mark uh, where it lies. Then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to come back an inch, actually probably about three quarters of an inch, come back, and that's going to be my cut line. I'm going to make these, these tabs, I'm going to turn them under. A nice tool for doing that is a, a Malco 9-inch hand seamer. One of the reasons I really like these is that it has a 2-inch deep throat and you really need all of that 2 inches in, in a couple of applications. Um, one of which is going to be this fold over for the gable, and you can see how nicely that works. Um, obviously, you can do this procedure of bending on a handbrake, and this two-foot brake is um, just a, a tool that uh, many of our installers have, have found to be very, very convenient. Uh, it's lightweight. Uh, it can be mounted up on the, the ridge next to a valley. I've made that uh, what I call a ridge brake table, and that actually is made to fit the dimensions of that brake and to mount the brake right up near the valley so that I can do all the bends that are necessary to go in and out of the valley. Um, as you can see here, here's a panel that was uh, bent to go into the valley, and uh, if you can do that bend on a brake, like the two foot brake there, that's going to make for a nice crisp look and, and uh, a professional finish on the panel. I've bent these tabs under. You can also see here at the top that I've, uh, I've left it so it goes two inches over the ridge. And I picked two inches because that's the depth of these, these uh, flangers, which works out very well. So it's going to go over the ridge there. You can see I've got uh, two nail holes on the very outside. That's where I'm going to, to pin it to the deck at the top. And then I'm going to secure it to the deck using these nailing clips. So then I, I would just simply continue these, these clips every foot going on up the valley. And that allows for some expansion and contraction of the metal. And also, it avoids uh, puncturing this valley pan at any point. And that's, that's uh, I think, a really crucial component. That way, if, if any water gets underneath the shingle, any condensation or anything, it's going to collect in this water return channel and it's going to drain out at the eave. Here's an instance where you can see we've got two valleys that, that come together um, at the top of a dormer type feature. You can see how the shingles are bent over the, the standing rib that we saw in the, the valley um, over at the training deck. You can see that I, I put a taper in the bends that I make to the shingle. 
got about an inch and a quarter here. It tapers down to seven eighths at, at the top. But every course subsequent to that, I'm going to go from an inch and seven eighths down to seven eighths at the top. So I'm going to have a one inch taper. And you can see how it just makes for a very nice, clean, attractive look as, as you go up the, the valley pan. We like to emphasize that uh, one of the, the features or benefits of our valleys are that they are open valleys. That is, the shingles don't come to the center, but rather we have this uh, seven inch wide channel that, that goes down that allows all debris to be uh, naturally flushed out of the valley and, and off of the roof. Uh, a couple of different ways that we can handle hips. Uh, this is what we call a hip lineal. Uh, makes for a fast installation. Um, simply back-to-back -back J channels that are, are connected together over the top and the shingle simply slides into those gable channels or excuse me hip channels. Um, the normal uh, installation would involve the use of hip caps and you can see that these caps cover a, a full course and uh, tuck up into the shingle uh, above the cap and then there's a little tab that goes up the hip line that allows it to be attached directly to the deck. Again, as I said, this is the normal hip treatment. This would be particularly useful if you have uh, mismatched pitches. Say you have a 10-12 on one side and a 6-12 pitch on the other side. Well, in that case, obviously the, the courses are not going to match up as you go up the hip line. So this makes it very easy to bring the shingles together at the hip when you have those mismatched pitches. Uh, you can see up at the top, uh, we have a rigid plastic vent uh, system with our decorative caps placed on top. Uh, that probably is how the majority of our um, ridges are, are finished. But an option to that is what we call our high flow ridge vent. And this is a lineal piece. It's uh, made out of 12 foot long uh, aluminum. And it has 20 uh, inches of net free area. Uh, so a good amount of ventilation occurs through that. One thing I might mention about this, this fold over gable channel that if you have what we call a flying gable where the ridge is longer than the eave so that it, it protrudes out, this is the, really the only kind of gable that uh, functions well in that kind of situation. Again, you can see how the shingles are are bent down into and tucked into that, that channel. Very secure type of, of situation. You might see here next that um, I've put a chimney on this training deck. This is what we would call an apron flashing. If possible, I like to, to uh, hook this flashing into the top lock of the, the shingle below it. Um, this is just made out of coil stock. This is something that you're going to bend on site uh, because you never know for sure where this top, this last course is going to fall. So, you know, I may well have needed to make this longer. I'm going to cut a kerf to allow this, this apron flashing to go back into the kerf. I'm going to put sealant in the kerf first and then I'm going to put my flashing in place and then I'll run another bead of sealant um, beyond that. All of the sidewall pieces for our, our various um, product lines have a, a height of, in the piece of seven and five eighths inches. And uh, the rationale behind that seven and five eighths inches is that you're gonna to need to, to cut a kerf oftentimes in the side of the chimney um, in order to, to, to flash it properly. And an easy way to cut that kerf is to do it with a circular saw as opposed to cutting with a, a grinder. 
If you have a circular saw with a masonry blade, usually the distance from the blade to the edge of the shoe is one and a half inches. If you take a two by six and place it on the deck, you'll be five and a half inches off the deck. Place your circular saw on top of that two by six and the blade's going to be seven inches off the deck. Our sidewall height is seven and five eighths inches, which leaves you five eighths eighth inch of material to bend back at 90 degrees to go into that kerf. Okay, I just uh, wanted to show you um, the detail of, of how you might do this sidewall flashing and cutting the kerf into the chimney. Again, I have my two by six here. Uh, I've screwed it into a two by four. It'll sit on the deck. I can screw it into the, the chimney. And then, of course, I'm going to sit my circular saw on top of that two by six. And it'll allow me to have a very straight cut, uniform cut at a uniform depth there on the chimney. So. Hopefully this gave you some insight and tips on how to install around different flashing zones of a metal shingle roof. Next week, we're gonna be learning step-by-step -step how to install a pipe flashing on a metal shingle roof as well, so stick around for that. Comment down below if you have any questions, love to talk to you. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel, and we'll catch you next time.